Encased, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG developed by Dark Crystal Games and published by Prime Matter, is an isometric, narrative-heavy, choice- and skill-driven RPG made for fans of classic CRPGs. That said, it's not without modern sensibilities. The Fallout inspirations are obvious, but the gameplay experience is closest to that of 2014's Wasteland 2, or its sequel, 2020's Wasteland 3, with elements of both narrative and gameplay inspired by the Roadside Picnic novel and the Stalker games. You could maybe argue it sticks too close to its inspirations, but it nonetheless provides a complex gameplay experience and a new world for fans of the genre to explore. In case begins in the alternate, retro future of 1976, as your character, ideally customized from scratch, descends into the dome, a mysterious object discovered five years prior. The multinational Kronos Corporation has developed research laboratories and a workforce towns beneath the dome in order to collect relics with inexplicable powers. However, leaving the dome is lethal to any living thing, so people go in with the knowledge they'll never come out. As you'd expect from a power-hungry corporation with total information control, the snazzy brochures that led your protagonist and many others to enlist glosses over several important caveats. Those who sign the contract are assigned to one of five wings. Scientists and research assistants make up the white wing, those with military or security background, the black wing, those with managerial or leadership backgrounds, the silver wing, engineers and construction workers, the blue wing, and finally, the orange wing consists of convicts trading jail time for life under the dome as laborers. Your arrival at Concord Station beneath the spire, the only link to the surface, kicks off a lengthy prologue that serves as a microcosm of things to come. You'll be assigned a priority task and head north towards one of the most secretive research stations. Without wanting to spoil too much, you'll get a glimpse at corporate bureaucracy, the tension between the wings, the true state of settlements within the dome, and the threat of poorly understood hazards. Despite the best attempts by corporate PR, Kronos still has little understanding of the dome and the relics within it. That early journey ultimately puts you in contact with a previously unknown mega anomaly, triggering a massive maelstrom that destroys the central spire and cuts the dome off from the world. Two years and several weird dream sequences later, you emerge from the ruins into a very different world. Any semblance of order has collapsed, the wings have fragmented and incorporated into new factions. Animals have mutated, and it's now clear the dome is no passive, inert phenomenon. Chasing unclear visions, you traverse this wasteland, looking for a way to control the maelstrom and possibly escape the dome. This kicks off a multi-part quest that'll take you to all corners of the dome and put you into contact with the new factions. How you choose to interact, assuming you have the skills of course, could involve bringing them together, picking a side and wiping out the others, or simply turning them on each other and picking through the scraps for what you need. When it comes to the gameplay loop, Encase doesn't deviate wildly from genre norms, but it offers a degree of complexity that places it among the best. The mostly linear prologue is a great example, as you could invest anywhere from 3 to 6 hours getting through it, along with discovering a half dozen entertaining ways to perish. There are unique reactions and dialogue dependent on the wing you've chosen, side quests that highlight the importance of attribute and ability scores, basic survival meters to manage, Think fatigue, hunger, radiation, their intrusiveness dependent on the difficulty, and a primary quest that typically presents three or more ways to progress each step. As would be expected from any good CRPG, the opening sequence immediately gave me choice-based FOMO. I went back and spent an hour with the character creator, marvelling at the number of interconnected attribute-based skills, the milestone unlocks, and the massive perk list. Ultimately, I decided to create a charismatic and intelligent Silverwing candidate, a morally flexible jack-of-all-trades, with a preference for non-combat solution, and reliance on companions to do the dirty work. With that done, and the prologue behind me once again, it was time to traverse the sprawling dome. You move from location to location across the map, following primary and secondary quests, helping out or dooming communities, dealing with random encounters, and keeping everyone rested, fed, and hydrated. In case does a great job of ensuring events offer plenty of variety. Some missions require combat, others can be solved through exploration and stealth, some are best tackled with dialogue checks, while others still are brief text-based sequences that feel like a choose-your-own-adventure novel. Aside from your starting attributes, which affect genre staples like maximum health, resistances, carrying capacity, initiative, action points per round, and skills gained per level, you can put points into combat or applied skills every time you level up. 
combat covers your different weapon types and contraptions. Think powerful single-use items you can find or craft. While applied, covers your proficiency in medicine, science, tech, influence, criminality, survival, and piloting, which also includes the ability to wear servo suits, aka power armor. In encased, each milestone you reach in the skill tree unlocks up to four passive or active abilities. These could be new combat, dialogue, or situational skills, a passive buff to another skill tree, a perk that makes companions more effective in combat, or just a flat bonus to your reputation with a faction. However, many of these are dependent on multiple attributes and previously selected perks, so it's rare you'll have access to all of them immediately. This combination of skill checks, abilities, and perks, and how they allow you to progress through the world, past enemy encounters, and solve quest objectives, are the lifeblood of any good CRPG. Looking beyond your starting build and level up choices, you can equip gear, weapons, and consumables that boost attributes, resistances, and some skills. However, these are often pricey, or come with negative effects, like chemical addiction. With the right skills and plenty of scavenging, and there is an absurd amount of junk you can collect, you can rather craft and improve your own gear. The aforementioned anomalies are rarer than gear, but they provide much larger bonuses if you're willing to deal with the negative effects. To find many of these relics, typically found off the beaten path, you need to circumvent or discharge, with a bolt of course, deadly small-scale anomalies. If that all sounds overwhelming, you'll be happy to know there's still plenty of opportunity for basic role-playing, no skills or perks required. There's even a toggle to hide unavailable dialogue options or skill checks, if you found the constant reminder of alternate possibilities too much, how you respond to characters, which objectives you prioritize, and who you decide to help, all have a big impact on the narrative, and there are several mutually exclusive quests. Even the short prologue sequence gives you the chance to establish first impressions with several important characters, potentially influencing their future response, and you alter the state of a few future locations you visit. When faced with openly hostile characters or mutants, stealth is a powerful ability all players have access to, and can be used to both avoid combat and commit crimes like theft and hacking. Enemy vision cones and their maximum detection range is always visible. The detection timer is generous when performing actions or moving at a distance, oh while patrol paths can be disrupted if you need to create a space to slip through. If stealth or dialogue fails, or just isn't an option with a bunch of mutants, the combat is serviceable. Encounters follow the classic turn-based formula, with character attributes determining the turn order and number of action points available, yet it also feels simple in comparison to its peers. Actions, weather movement, shooting, activating abilities, or using consumables, all have an AP cost to consider. You can break line of sight by moving around obstacles, but there's no dedicated cover system. The chance to hit changes based on weapon type range or abilities. There are explosive barrels and traps you can either avoid or utilize against your enemies. Companions are fully controllable, with skills that expand your tactical options. And there's even a non-combat approach which requires you dropping your foe's fatigue level to zero. Unfortunately, combat often feels like a simple numbers game, with your party and enemies trading blows until one of them falls. That said, there are often out-of-combat actions you can take before engaging enemies to skew the odds, such as gaining the high ground or inflicting damage in advance. You could, of course, create a tough-as-nails, damage-dealing build, and murder your way through combatants and non-hostile NPCs alike. The game even still gives you an option to discover clues that trigger the primary quests, but ultimately it feels like combat was never the primary focus. Also worth noting is that playing solo all but demands you invest in two combat skills to account for varied enemy resistances, limiting your access to the non-combat solutions. When it comes to the presentation, Encased looks great from afar, 90% of the time, but what it always does is nail the atmosphere. Sure, if you zoom in close or scrutinize each location, you will spot low-resolution textures and clipping objects, but on the whole, Encased offers up a distinctive art style, atmospheric lighting, and a heavy post-processing pass. Better still, the performance was solid on my four-year-old gaming laptop. The voice work and narration for key dialogue is good, though I eventually turned off the narrator as his flavor text drags out already verbose conversations. Action-based audio think combat sounds, explosions, and activated abilities, felt serviceable but unremarkable, whereas the ambient audio and unintrusive soundtrack are both excellent. They bring each location to life and contribute to the atmosphere. 
The soundtrack is a particular highlight, complementing each location or combat encounter, and yet never dominating the audiovisual experience. A final aspect to touch on is the partial gamepad support. It works well enough when traversing environments and engaging in combat, but feels unwieldy when trying to select specific items, dealing with pop-up menus, or navigating the inventory. It relies on the bumpers and triggers to highlight on-screen shortcuts that are then assigned to face buttons. In case could benefit from the increasingly common radial menu approach, use another console CRPG ports. Now, nothing is perfect, and there are several elements of Encase that feel a little jarring or underdeveloped. Moving from the dense but restrained prologue into the sprawling post-incident dome is a sudden change of pace and a spike in difficulty. Companions have relatively little to say and fewer interactions outside their dedicated quests. The multitude of crafting components you can collect simply feels unnecessary, while navigating the detail-heavy menu screens could be a little more intuitive. Minor gripes aside, fans of the genre should know they're in for a treat with Encased, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG. Its alternative history premise, central mystery, divergent narrative, skill and choice driven gameplay, and stylish presentation all make it one of the finest examples of modern CRPGs. It may stick a little too close to its inspirations and offer few novel features, but it's releasing into a genre that's far from crowded. As such, a new setting to explore, using classic mechanics, is still a positive. For those with a passing interest, there is a story difficulty mode to trivialize combat and the impact of survival meters, but this is still a dense and complex game that requires considerable investment of your time and concentration.